special show lined up for you today. We're really excited about it. It's dedicated to saving your heart and our go-to source, heartfailureanswers.com. So we will be guiding you through this very valuable resource and showing you how to prevent heart disease through food therapy and exercise, deal with the emotional toll of a diagnosis, and dispel some popular myths. Plus, we have a heart transplant cardiologist in studio to introduce you to the first and only FDA-approved heart failure monitoring device designed to improve the quality of life. And ladies, we have your wake-up call. Mom! I think you're having a heart attack. Honey, do I look like the type of person who has a heart attack? <laughs> We're showing you some of the signs women tend to brush off, so let's get started. Motivation, inspiration, problem solving. We keep you moving forward. Emotional Mojo starts now. Welcome to the show, everybody. It is a very special one indeed. Yes, and there it is. Take a look at the Change Your Life Challenge countdown clock. It is now ticking and today's show is all heart. So we are going to help you not only transform your life, but possibly save your life yeah. mm -hmm. by the time that clock hits zero. It's a big one today. So thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Michelle Yarn, along with clinical psychotherapist Jada Jackson and registered dietitian and nutritionist Tara Guidas. And as we said, welcome to our very special emotional mojo heart failure answers show so today we are schooling you on everything related to heart disease and failure new life-saving techniques which are amazing and most importantly prevention so as we move through the show you guys we are definitely encouraging you to check out the website heartfailureanswers.com you'll get more information on what we're talking about and much more and that address as you see is right there on your screen now before we get into today's change your life challenge there are some important numbers to keep in mind as we get into today's show take a look here for starters heart disease is the number one killer of men and women in America that's a statistic that surprises a lot of people. And according to the CDC, about 600,000 people die of heart disease in the United States every year. That is one in every four deaths. 720,000 Americans have a heart attack each year. And for 205,000 of those people, it's their second one. So we're gonna talk a lot about prevention today because 49% of Americans have at least one of these three major risk factors. We're talking high blood pressure, high LDL cholesterol, or they are smokers. So those are the things to keep in mind. So we mentioned today's Change Your Life Challenge, and we want you guys to stay positive during major health challenges, namely heart disease. And I'm gonna head back over with you ladies, but did you know that depression is a huge risk factor for heart disease in women? Depression, you wouldn't always think there was a link right, there, right? Right, but yeah, you always yeah. think of the nutrition side of things, you know, right. not right. eating healthy, but there definitely There's is a, a mental, mental health, health component. Yeah, yeah, depressed women under 55 are actually twice as likely to have heart disease or to die from any cause during that time period than those who were not depressed. And studies show that up to 33% of heart attack patients end up developing some degree of depression. So yeah. Jada, wow. you're gonna help us focus first on the person who is diagnosed with heart problems. Absolutely. How do they keep from sinking into depression? You know, it's so much that's going on when it comes to um, being sick and mental health. There's sure. definitely a link there. So first of all, you're going to want to recognize the depressive symptoms, and those are simply a loss in interest in everyday activities, hopelessness, helplessness, anger. There's a little self-loathing and irritability that takes place as well. But what you're going to want to do is you're not going to go straight to a mental health therapist or a psychologist. Call your primary care doctor first. Okay. And the reason this is important is because he has to he or she has to walk you through the importance of mental health care while you're facing the issues that um, go along okay, with the okay. heart disease, right? Sense, yeah. And then understand treatment options for depression, medication, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, rational emotive behavioral therapy, those are all um, definitely important. And then do not turn to substances to feel better like drugs, alcohol or tobacco. And then enlist a support team. Positive support from family and friends will assist in difficult life transitions. Now, for the loved ones of the patients, mm -hmm. we need to recognize a couple of things as well. 
recognize that your loved one may be hostile and angry, so don't retaliate or react. Okay. Encourage your loved one to seek professional help. Consider a support group. This is very important during this period of time. And then be aware of your own needs because caregivers also are susceptible to depression Absolutely. as well. So the one thing that we're going to do today is call your primary care doctor and make an appointment to discuss mental health care options or help if you're a caretaker make sure that you're going to assist your loved one to connect with his or her doctor today. I like that point about the caregiver too because you get mm -hmm. so wrapped up in doing everything for this person you right. may not realize it's taking a toll on your own health as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Well and a lot of times it affects the caregiver even more mm -hmm. than the person because you're feeling that sense of loss sure. or you know what you feel helpless. Okay Absolutely. you guys have the tools you need to take on our challenge today and 22 minutes left in our show to do it. Now let's get you motivated. We want you to recognize the signs and symptoms of heart attacks and men and women alike can experience those well-known symptoms like gripping chest pains and breaking out in a cold sweat but women can have subtler less recognizable symptoms they tend to brush off as everyday ailments for example indigestion and nausea this is interesting stomach pains are a common yet less known symptom of heart problems that's interesting yeah another one you may have ear jaw neck or shoulder pain take note of that because many people think the arm is the only indicator mm. another symptom exhaustion or bouts of dizziness. In fact, more than 70% of female patients reported extreme fatigue in the month prior to heart attacks. Really? Yes, and severe shortness of breath, sometimes accompanied by chest discomfort, sometimes not. 40% of patients say they couldn't catch their breath mm. doing normal everyday things. So again, you know, women brush it off as the flu sometimes, yep. stress, or they're under the weather, but that pay could attention. put your life in jeopardy. Absolutely. Definitely, so pay attention to those. Just keep an eye out. And you know what, because women play superhero all day, we do ignore those signs, but you're gonna love this. Emmy-nominated actress Elizabeth Banks teamed up with the American Heart Association to create a video called Just a Little Heart Attack, creatively showcasing the symptoms that we brush off. It started out like a totally normal day. <laughs> Brother. You have to eat something. Here. Okay, five minutes to carpool. You okay, Mom? Oh, I'm fine. Sandwich orders. What do you want? Almond butter and jelly. Spaghetti. Oh, you sure you're okay? I'm fine, sweetie. I am so late. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, hey, honey. Hmm. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Oh, yeah. Here. Acai. My favorite. See you guys later. We're going in three minutes. Oh my God, what am I doing? I forgot to cut off the crust. Voila, shoes on, potty if you need it. Honey, get your sister. Okay, here. Nobody move. I'm getting a dustpan. Oh. Mom, mm. I think you're having a heart attack. Honey. Do I look like the type of person who has a heart attack? <laughs> I'm just gonna sit down. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Nine. Five, seven. Hi, sorry to bother you. <laughs> I think I might be having a little heart attack. Sorry to bother, bother you. you. <laughs> My goodness. So that video did go viral. It had more than 3.5 million views. Here's what's so cool. It actually saved a life. My sister-in-law, Kim, sent the video to me. It started out like a totally normal day. I watched the video, but I deleted it because it didn't, you know, relate to me. But a month later, I felt a pain in my chest. And I thought back to that video, and I thought, could this be a heart attack? And I called 911, so that video saved my life. I mean, wow. if just one person can benefit like that, yeah. their job is done. Yeah, the message came across, and you know what, a lot of those I didn't know, like the yeah. nausea, the chest nope. pains, you know, just really fatigued. And sadly, that's like a typical morning it's for <laughs> busy women, so definitely cool to see that video. Yeah, absolutely. Saving lives. That's what it's for, right? Man. 
And again, we can't say it enough, knowledge is power. HeartFailureAnswers.com is a one-stop shop for everything you need to know, whether it's symptoms, treatment options, recovery, lifestyle questions, uh, questions and answers with patients, and even clinic locators for when you're traveling here or abroad. All you have to do is log on to HeartFailureAnswers.com. Michelle? Thanks, Tara. Okay, you guys know here at Emotional Mojo, we always encourage you to take control of your own life. Well, guess what? That applies to your health as well. And when it comes to your heart, are you doing enough to protect that ticker of yours? Well, here today with more info is heart transplant cardiologist, Dr. Nirav Raval. I wanna thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. You're gonna clear some things up for everybody because even I was confused about heart failure and what it means and how to look out for it. So I think it's really important to have you here to, to help us out today. Great. So thank you. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about what you do. What's a typical day for you? I'm a transplant cardiologist. Mm -hmm. I'm a type of a cardiologist that sees, sees patients with uh, perhaps the weakest of the hearts uh, that are uh, around. And uh, so I may see patients in the office. I may be in the heart catheterization lab seeing uh, patients there and helping them with various procedures. I may be involved with uh, a team of, of people that uh, might be helping somebody uh, with a heart transplant or a, a ventricular assist device or a heart pump that we use to help people with uh, weak hearts as well. Wow, okay. And it, since today we're talking about heart failure, I think this is one of the most important things here. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have a misconception, and I originally did as well, about heart failure. To me, I was thinking, oh, that means your heart just suddenly stops and that's it. But that's not exactly the case. What exactly is heart failure? Heart failure exists when the heart has become weakened from some reason uh, to a point where the patient actually doesn't get enough blood flow around the body. That's okay. actually what heart failure is. Okay, and we were talking a little earlier about this. It's not necessarily that certain people are predisposed to this. This could happen to anyone, different ages, different health, right? Yes, it can be uh, from, for example, a heart attack might weaken a heart through muscle of the heart actually dying uh, during one of those incidences. Sure. Uh, it can happen uh, where a viral uh, attack occurs of the heart and the heart is weakened because of that. Uh, it can happen for a, a variety of reasons, but the uh, end result is that the heart muscle itself is weakened and now the heart has an, uh, a hard, tough time to pump blood around the body okay. as a result. So being that it's something that's chronic then, yeah. it's definitely important to continuously monitor patients who have heart failure, correct? That's right. As you said, okay. the heart doesn't stop just all of a sudden. It actually kind of fails over time and it's a chronic disease process that yeah. needs monitoring. So a lot of people think keeping up with their heart health too means all I have to do is keep an eye on my weight and my blood pressure. Those seem to be the typical things to take care of, but is that enough? For heart failure, no. I think that you really have to be monitored by um, medical professionals, uh, doctors, etc. Et and I think that's important because things can change over time. And what once worked for you, perhaps even three months ago, may not now. Sure. And just needs warrant it warrants uh, looking at. So you mentioned monitoring, and this is really exciting because for some people this may be an option. There's a new monitoring system that's available for managing heart failure. Right. Can you share some of that info with us? Yeah, it's actually an implantable sensor that looks at the pressures in the lungs. As I mentioned earlier, you have a situation where there's quite a bit of, uh, of fluid retention, and, and sometimes what that does is it allows for the pressures to increase in the lungs. So the sensor that you have in your hand there um, is actually something that that um, will actually measure that change and allow us to have an idea about uh, somebody's health uh, before it may result in something like a hospitalization. Wow, and I want you guys to see this because it's actually really tiny, which is why I have this dime in my hand so you can see the comparison here. How does this work? This is a, a, an amazingly simple piece of machinery on the one hand because it has no battery. It is energized through through a, um, a, a signal, a radio signal, and that signal is bounced back to a device um, that can measure the actual pressure uh, wow. in, the, in the body. This is exciting. I mean, what's the reaction been like from patients and doctors? Yeah, I was originally involved with the clinical trials in the United States, both the feasibility and the pivotal trial that was that was used to tr to prove the 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 efficiency of this type of sensor sure. and, the, and the clinical effect. And it's been amazing because. Uh, Physicians now have something that they could only get in the heart catheterization lab, but available actually at home, which yeah. is 
tremendous for us. And then the patients on the, on the flip side were so excited about this because patients that were admitted to the hospital with heart failure, with fluid and those kinds of right. things, now um, had a vastly different experience because it, it stopped a lot of those readmissions to the hospital. Now, we know it's not for everybody, but if you talk to your doctor and they decide this is a route to go, there are some questions you should always keep in mind yeah. with your doctor for an appointment. Let's say you're talking about this kind of procedures. Are there certain questions we should be asking? Yeah, I think that um, if, if, a pa if a patient uh, has had a few hospitalizations for heart failure, um, they may be a candidate for this. This is not for everyone. Sure. Um, but I think, you know, uh, some experience with putting the device in or doing uh, these types of invasive procedures would be helpful to ask your, your doctor so you feel Absolutely. comfortable with it too. Yeah, I mean, we want to know things. What are the risks, you know, right. for this procedure for me? How long will it take? How long will I be in the hospital? Things like recovery time. Questions like that are important for you and any family members or caregivers to take note of. Very true. Yeah. Another tip I liked that you had mentioned earlier, when you go to your appointment, bring something to write with. I know a lot of us don't write anymore, but why is that so important? I think it organizes your thoughts. And I think that people that come into my office, as an example, that have a list of questions, we can really go through a lot of information in a very short period of time. Yeah. And, it's, and you can get more out of your actual visit with, uh, with a physician, myself or otherwise. So I think it's a great way to organize your thoughts. Um, I usually call them court reporters. Usually it might be the, the significant other of sure. the person that actually is coming, you know, the patient's sitting up on my table and, yeah. the, and the, I call them the court reporters in the corner <laughs> and recording things. And that's good because when you get home, sometimes you tend to forget yeah. and it reinforces it if you look back at what your or notes were. Or you come up with another question sure. while you're reading. You know, are there any side effects to keep in mind or, you know, things that people should be aware of? In terms of the sensor, uh, I think that, that the sensor is a pretty easy, easy procedure to do. Um, it's actually something that you can um, do very quickly. Uh, the risks are very minimal. Okay. Um, as far as as far as just general things to keep in mind uh, when you're at the hospital with your with your office is um, you know ask about your medicines. Uh, sure. Is everything Always is important. everything still necessary? Do I need to make any changes? And these are the reasons people should talk to their doctors about yeah. it because it may not be for them. Right. But I love this. There's a really great resource for anybody at home who wants to get some more information here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. HeartFailureAnswers.com. Okay. It's a great way to get um, a very good information on the internet. I mean, I think there's a lot of internet sites out that are that are that are. Um, you, you wonder what you're getting. Sure. Uh, but this is kind of a, a very good um, adjudicated site where you can get really good information that you know is going to be accurate. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, doctor. And guys at home, if you want to learn more, you can go to heartfailureanswers.com, which also lists important safety information. And remember, talk to your doctor to see if this is right for you. Thanks again. All right, that was some great information from the doctor there. So I'm going to help you prevent heart disease through food, of course. Like so that. we need that proper nutrition for our overall health. But when it comes to our ticker, there are specific foods that help us pump blood through our bodies. So for starters, mm -hmm. eating your fruits and vegetables and your whole grains. Of course, this is a given. I, I never knew that. say it enough. I already <laughs> knew that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay, so, but it's true, those fruits and veggies and whole grains are very nutrient dense and they're rich in fiber, which actually can help prevent heart disease by helping to lower cholesterol, blood pressure, and also helps you maintain a healthy body weight, which is one of the best things you can do as well. Okay. So how about those bad fats? What are bad fats? Well, those saturated <laughs> fats, okay? So high blood cholesterol levels are dangerous because they can lead to that buildup of plaque in the arteries and that increases your susceptibility to a heart attack and stroke. So avoiding mm -hmm. those saturated fats, trans fats like butter, fatty meats, cheese, ice cream, creams, I know all, all the stuff. All the stuff that tastes really good. <laughs> I know, so you gotta check the labels and, uh, and, and look for that and that okay. can drastically help you as well, okay. okay? So you wanna choose healthy fats like olive oil, fish, nuts and seeds, and, and if if you want to do dairy, just do like the 1% or low fat dairy. Okay. 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 How about sodium? So sodium is everywhere in our mm -hmm. diet. Eating a lot of salt can actually cause high blood pressure, which contributes to heart disease. There's a lot of processed canned food that contains sodium. A lot of restaurant dishes are notoriously high in sodium. So again, you just have to read labels thoroughly. Right. And don't be afraid to ask for modifications at restaurants, especially a lot of the sauces and salad dressing mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, marinara sauce, those are going to be really high. Okay. And the last one is all about the portion size. Portion control. Portion 
portion control because yeah. it's the extra weight that causes you to have a higher risk of heart disease because your heart has to pump harder to pump around that blood, right? So keep track of how much you're eating so that you're fully aware of how much you're putting into your body. And, you know, our minds can trick us sometimes. So, yeah. you know, portioning things out are going to be the biggest way to go. Okay. Super important. I think I got that one. This is All good right. stuff. Good information. Good. good. All right. Back to you, Michelle. All right, thanks ladies. And I think that's smart too because you don't always know what's going on with your heart. You may look okay from the outside, but it's important to take note of your nutrition for sure. Well, while you guys make your way over here, we're gonna start something a little different here. You know, there's a lot of info out there when it comes to heart health. We are gonna test our knowledge from today's show with a twist on our yes, no game. I'm calling it fact or fiction. Whoa. So basically, I will give you the statement and you guys will reply, yes, it's fact or no, it's fiction. Fiction. Okay. And then we're going to go back to Dr. Revol for the answers here. Cool. So he's okay. given us the legit answers. And here's the first one. Heart failure means your heart has suddenly stopped beating. So guys, is this one yes, it's fact or no, it's fiction? Fact or fiction? Your heart has suddenly stopped beating. Oh wait, your heart has suddenly stopped beating means... Is it fact or fiction? Is that heart failure? I don't... I'm going to say no. No. Okay, I'm not going to answer because I know the answers. Oh. Let's go over to Dr. Revol and get the answer. This is actually fiction. Uh, the heart uh, doesn't just stop in heart failure. Heart failure is actually a chronic uh, situation where the heart is just weak and doesn't allow us to get blood around the body like normal. Good job, guys. Nice. That one was yeah. fiction. So again, doesn't mean your heart has stopped beating. It occurs when your heart muscle or valves have been damaged so your heart can't pump the blood around, as Dr. Raval said, as well as it should. Okay. All right, so here's the next one. Is this fact or fiction? Heart failure is a normal consequence of getting old. Is that fact or fiction? You think it's fiction? I'm gonna say fiction. You think it's fiction. Let's yeah. see what Dr. Raval has to say. This is fiction. While most people with heart failure in the United States are elderly, people at any age can suffer from heart failure. Good nice. job, right. you ladies are good. So as he said, they may mostly be elderly, but it doesn't mean it's part of the aging process. Okay. Each year, about 88,000 women between 45 and 64 have a heart attack. Wow. And a woman's heart disease risk increases at yep. menopause. Uh, so that's not like know elderly. That one. You yeah. Know? Okay. All right, here's our next one. Is this statement fact or fiction? If you have heart failure, you should still exercise regularly. You think yes. it's fact say. and you say yeah. fact. Yes. So let's see what Dr. Raval <laughs> says about this one. This is fact. Exercise in a regular capacity after heart failure has been shown to help people's longevity. Ladies, uh -huh. high five! Oh, nice. Hey, so it is important to exercise. When you exercise, you help condition your heart muscle. It is a muscle mm -hmm. to pump more effectively, but you have to make sure you don't overdo right. it. You have to find a balance, Follow right? Follow those doctor's orders. Yes, yeah. things like walking, jogging, biking on a stationary bike yeah. are usually good ways to improve strength and endurance. But as Tara said, before you start an exercise program, make sure you check with your doctor. All right, good Very job, important. guys. Right. Cool. Very good. So speaking of exercise, it can also help prevent heart problems as well as nutrition, like we talked about. And the earlier you start, the better. So parents, you need to start developing healthy habits in your kids ASAP. So here are some tips to get you started. Get the whole family moving. Plan times for everyone to get moving together. Take walks, ride bikes, go swimming, garden, just play hide and seek. Everyone benefits, okay? How about this? You have to limit TV time, video game time, iPad time, computer time, whatever. <laughs> whatever time they're spending sitting, because this leads to a sedentary lifestyle and can actually cause excess snacking, which then increases risks for obesity and heart disease. The American Heart Association suggests limi limiting screen time to less than two hours per day. That's total for the whole day. And I'll tell okay, you yeah. what. Just at a time. When right. you've got small <laughs> yeah. kids and you're saying, I need to get something done, just watch this show, that two hours, Guilty. that will uh -huh. add up. Yep. Yeah, I mean, really. Yep. So that's a really good one to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah. Know How that. about this? Pick truly rewarding rewards. Don't okay. reward with TV, video games, candy, snacks for a job well done. It's easy to do, but there's other ways that you can celebrate good behavior and those good grades. Maybe and like I an love... experience. Or yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go out exactly. somewhere. Go, go do, to, and, go and do something. And it could be active, like going to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I love this one. Make dinner time family time. So when everyone sits down together to eat, there's less chance of children eating the wrong foods. And you can get your kids involved in cooking and meal planning. They actually love it. Everyone develops better eating habits when they're together. Okay. And you can also make a game of reading food labels together. So the whole family can learn what's good for their health. It's a habit that really can change behavior for a lifetime. I like that. 
Yeah, I like that getting everyone involved and that way you develop very healthy behaviors for eating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's so many recipes out there mm -hmm. on the internet and everything else that you can search together or look at the fridge and go, all right, what do we have in here? Chicken, yeah. whatever. Let's look, let's find yeah. something on the, on the internet to make for dinner tonight. And you give and a kid a chance to make a mess and I'm, they're in. They're all exactly. over it. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let's dive into some celebrity mojo. We may put them on a pedestal, but celebrities aren't immune to heart disease either. David Letterman had quintuple bypass surgery Ooh. in January of 2000. Get this, he had to have emergency surgery the morning after an angiogram revealed severe blockages in his arteries. Wow. And Jeopardy host Alex Trebek suffered two mild heart attacks in 2007 and 2012. He says the second time he thought he had simply pulled a muscle in his back mm. while doing yard artwork that's wow. very interesting and then singer Tony Braxton was rushed to the emergency room while she was performing on Broadway back in 2004 at the tender age of 36 wow. she was diagnosed with pericarditis and an inflammation of the lining of the heart mm -hmm. and Rosie O'Donnell said she chewed aspirin instead of calling 911 when she suffered a heart attack in 2012 she calls it the stupidest decision she ever made mm -hmm. in her life and has some advice for the rest of us. Go to your cardiologist mm -hmm. once a year, starting at the age of 40. Mm. People are having heart attacks younger and younger. Really? Yes, because of all the additives in the food, because uh -huh. of the lack of, of exercise. And, and people don't, you know, people, women, will get their breasts examined every year and yeah. never fail because they're so worried, but never go to a cardiologist. Right, right. So I would say that's the number one thing. Know your numbers. Couldn't and that's agree so more. important. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And you know what? It's interesting because I think I said this because Tara, I've been asking you for a long yeah. time. My mom's like, give me heart, you know, healthy, healthy. foods that yeah. we can eat because my family has heart yeah. um, Well, it's the number one killer and, of yeah. men and women. So. Yeah, and so 36 for Tony Braxton. Right? I can't get over that. Yeah. That's it's 36 crazy. years old. That's why we really do need to take yeah. it. And she made a good point. We go and get our breasts checked. Why sure. not our hearts? Sure. So well, we, yeah, and I agree. Every Everyone over the age of 40 should establish with a cardiologist. Sure. Yeah. Because it's the number one killer. Yep. All right, guys, well, time is up on today's Change Your Life Challenge to stay positive during major health problems. You had some great tips for us. Sarah, Absolutely. Like Recognize depressive symptoms. Call your primary care doctor before you go get counseling. Understand treatment options for depression and don't turn to substances to feel better like drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Okay. And then enlist a support team. It's so crucial. Sure. And that number one thing to do today is to call your primary care doctor today and make an appointment to discuss mental health care options for depression. Or if you're a caretaker, make sure that your loved one or help them assist them to um, call their doctor. Yep. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to our special Heart Failure Answer Show. Remember, don't fail your heart and spread the word as you're gathered with loved ones for the holidays. Your comprehensive one-stop shop for any questions or concerns is heartfailureanswers.com. It's really nice to have one resource to yeah. go to online Absolutely. in the comfort of your home where you can get some answers and have and any questions that you need resolved. So. Happy, happy Christmas Eve to everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Emotional Mojo. Bye-bye. Today's show was brought to you by St. Jude Medical.